Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. If you don't have our Grade 12 Life Sciences books, Parts 1 and 2, you'll still be able to follow these lessons. This video looks at the Evidence of Evolution, Part 1. In this video, we focus on the first two of the evidences of evolution. Number 1, we'll look at the fossil record. Number 2, we'll look at descent with modification. In Part 2 video, we'll look at biogeography, genetics and other forms of evidence like comparative biochemistry, vestigial organs and comparative embryology. The fossil record is the first evidence we'll look at. You're familiar with fossils from grade 10, but we'll give a brief overview of fossils first. A fossil is either the organism itself or the remains or imprints or footprints of an organism preserved in rock. A fossil is evidence of history of past organisms, whether they're extinct or whether they're existing species. It also provides information about the climate in the past and the impact of humans on the environment and biodiversity. Types of fossils include body fossils, where hard parts or bone or exoskeleton are fossilized to form rock. A mold fossil is formed by the space or the cavity in the rock left by the organism after the tissues dissolve. A cast fossil is formed when the remains of the organism or minerals or sediment fill the mold and fossilize to form a cast, so it's a replica of the organism. A trace fossil is evidence left behind by organism's activities like footprints or feces or burrows or nests or tooth marks. The fossil record lists all discovered fossils and their location discovered by paleontologists across the world, whether they're plants or animals or other organisms. Over 99% of the fossil record is invertebrates. The fossil record is an incomplete record because most organisms don't fossilize. They don't have hard body parts. Soft bodies decompose faster or they're eaten or decomposed and the body structure is unrecognizable. The formation of fossils or fossilization occurs under specific conditions to prevent decomposition. Most fossils form in watery environments and in sedimentary rock. The first condition for fossilization is rapid burial, whether this is in mud or silt or resin or lava or tar. Burial must be quick to prevent decomposition of the tissues, and sudden burial may be due to floods, mudslides, volcanic eruptions, or resin tree sap that hardens to form amber. High pressure also speeds up the process of fossilization as it forces minerals from the surrounding groundwater into the body tissues. These minerals are deposited in the spaces in the tissues or shells, or they replace the body tissues entirely to form stone. Lack of oxygen is another condition. These anaerobic conditions slow down decomposition. The geological time scale was compiled from information of extinct species as well as species still living today. It aims to explain the history of Earth and propose the order in which evolution occurred. Eras and periods are recognized by the extinctions or appearances of fossils. Evolutionary scientists expect to find simpler organisms in the deeper layers and more complex organisms in the more recent or upper layers, older fossils in the lower layers and younger fossils in the upper layers, less biodiversity in the deeper layers and more biodiversity in the upper layers. These trends are not always supported by the fossil record. The age of fossils can be determined from the age of the rock in which they occur. And rock strata in turn are also dated by the presence of particular fossils associated with it. Index fossils or indicator fossils are used to distinguish one rock layer from another. Index fossils like ammonites, ferns, corals, gastropods, trilobites, crinoids lived in a specific geological age, they're widespread, they're abundant and they're short-lived, so they can be used to date a particular rock layer as well as the fossils in the same rock layer. Ammonites and trilobites are ideal index fossils. The ammonites are extinct relatives of the octopus but with a shell and trilobites are arthropods. Transitional fossils 
Gaps in the fossil record may occur between the appearances of different types of organisms with no transitional or in-between fossils. Transitional fossils have characteristics of both the ancestral form and the descendants. For example, if we look at reptiles evolving to form birds, then we would expect the transitional form in between. Archaeopteryx is a well-known example of a transitional form. It's known as the earliest and most primitive bird and considered a transitional form between reptiles and birds from the Jurassic period. It shows both reptile characteristics and birds. For example, as a reptile, it has teeth and sockets, it has a long bony tail, it's got claws on its fingers. But bird-like characteristics, it has a wishbone and it has feathers. Other transitional fossils include whale fossils with reduced hind limbs adapted for swimming and forelimbs adapted for walking on land. The famous fossil Lucy is not considered a direct ancestor of modern humans but considered a transition fossil. She shows some ape-like characteristics like long arms, protruding jaw and a small brain but also human-like traits like bipedalism, the ability to walk upright. The theory for the gaps. Transitional fossils are rare. Darwin's idea of gradualism where one species slowly changes into other species over long periods of time would predict transitional fossils before the appearance of each new species. But the lack of transitional fossils led Gould and Aldridge to propose their theory of punctuated equilibrium. It proposes sudden appearances of new species followed by long periods of no change, equilibrium or stasis. Living fossils are species found in the fossil record and thought extinct for hundreds of millions of years and then discovered alive in modern times, relatively unchanged. Examples include corals, crocodiles, crabs like the horseshoe crab, cockroaches and the coelacanth. Here's an fossil example of the coelacanth and the living example that was caught off the South African coast. The coelacanth is a lobe-finned fish that was always thought to be the first animal to link water-living animals to land-living tetrapods. But further studies, as shown in this phylogenetic tree, showed the lungfish as a more recent relative. Descent with modification. Darwin used this expression to explain biological evolution. He believed that all organisms are related through descent from one common ancestor. As we see in his rough note here, he believed the idea of all organisms being part of one tree of life. An example of descent with modification is a basic body plan or pattern of bones, like the example shown in vertebrates in the forelimb that is modified to perform different functions in different environments. This is called the pentadactyl limb. In comparative anatomy, we look at similarities and differences in body plans or patterns, and these structures may either be homologous or analogous. We'll look at homologous structures first, as described by Darwin. The example of the vertebrate forelimb that shows a similar structure body plan adapted for different functions in different vertebrates. One long bone followed by two smaller long bones, followed by the wrist bones, followed by the hand bones, followed by the five phalanges or fingers. That's why it's called the pentadactyl limb. This basic body pattern is shown in similar structures in birds for flying or whales for swimming or dogs for running, etc. The evolutionary interpretation of these observations suggest a common ancestor. Similar structure, different functions known as homologous structures. Homologous structures or homologies are where they're adapted for different functions like flying in a bat, swimming in a dolphin. Homologous structures are seen as evidence of evolution as they suggest a common ancestor. The more similar the homologous structures, the more closely related the species. One common ancestor gives rise to many species that become more different over time. We call this divergent evolution. Another example is shown in the modified limbs in insects. 
where the same structure is modified for different functions in different habitats. The same structure is adapted for digging in the cricket or for diving in the beetle, or modified leaves and plants for different functions, from preventing water loss, or for colorful petals, or for catching insects. Modification within a species is illustrated in horse evolution based on horse-like fossils, where a four-toed fossil is modified over time to form the single-toed modern horse adapted for speed. Analogous structures. Comparative anatomy may also show different structures with the same function in different organisms. We call these analogous structures, where organisms originated independently from different evolutionary origins like X and Y. There is no common ancestor, but the descendants became more similar over time due to a similar environment. We call this convergent evolution. For example, bat and insect wings are both adapted for flying in air, but they're different structures. Fins in fish and flippers in dolphin, both adapted for swimming in water, but they are different structures. And they are entirely unrelated species. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.